Hey there, Brainbox fans, uh, and welcome to another video. I'm here today to tell you about something really exciting. We're talking about uh, Red Dragon. That's right, Dragon's finally here. The long wait is over. We're going to be talking about the Dragon camera, what makes it so special, how it's different from the old uh, Red Epic, and we're going to give you a brief uh, rundown of all the settings in Dragon. This is the Dragon body. It looks just like a normal Red Epic. Uh, it's about five pounds when you strip it all down, but when you build it all up, it looks more like this. What we have here in front of us, we have the Dragon body itself. We have a red 512 gig SSD here. We have the Red Pro EVF module on a wooden camera bracket, an Airy FF4 follow focus attached to a wooden camera 15 millimeter studio base plate, a Schneider Cine Xenar 50 millimeter prime lens, a bright tangerine, I believe this is a Strummer 4 three stage matte box. And in the back here, we have a Red Pro 5 inch LCD touchscreen. Red brick here on power for power on a V lock battery plate, also from wooden camera, top handle as well. So, what is Dragon? Why is it so cool? Uh, first of all, it's, uh, it's 6K. Uh, so, a lot of people are wondering what's the big deal with the resolution? Do I really need 6K? I mean, 5K was already a lot. Does 6K really that big of a difference? Yes, it's a huge difference. Uh, the, the sensor in Dragon is 19 megapixels. The sensor in the uh, the original Red Epic uh, was 13.4 megapixels. So you're getting like around a 37% increase in your pixel density or in your pixel count right there. What all what does this all mean for your image? It means many more pixels to sample from, and we, even if you're going to be delivering your final product at at 2K or t even 1080p or, or 4K, your images are going to look all that more textured and detailed and complex because they're coming from a much higher uh, sampling rate. Uh, the original Red Epic um, had a base baseline ISO of 800. Um, now just really quickly for those of you who don't know, ISO is basically the sensitivity of your sensor. The higher your sensitivity, the more reactive your sensor will be to light, you'll get a brighter image. When you're talking about the Dragon sensor and you're talking about ISO, you have to think of it a little bit differently than when you think of it with an Epic. ISO and Dragon uh, is actually native ISO is 250. The thing is with the 250 base ISO, um, you can ramp it all the way up between anywhere from 250 all the way up to 2000 and you still maintain such an extremely clean uh, image that it's completely usable. If you took a rate an original Epic and cranked it up to 2000, you would definitely be seeing a significant noise, especially like in your lower IRE values. Previously with the Red Epic, you could also do that. You could also rate your camera below down to like around ISO 250. But when you were doing that, you were kind of handicapping the, the camera because you were basically t sacrificing your latitude. You're sacrificing dynamic range at the high end of your image. Uh, with Dragon, it's a different method of exposing. You set your ISO where you want to set it. If you were if you're shooting bright sunlight and you're out, outside. Go ahead and put it at 250. It's, it's going to be fine. You're still going to have the same full dynamic range of the sensor as you would as if you had it at 800. And that's possible because there's such greater pixel density, uh, a lower signal to noise ratio on the sensor, and just because the people at RED have worked really, really hard to manufacture probably the best sensor currently in existence. The other great thing about Dragon is the dynamic range. The consensus seems to be amongst most people that know these things better than I do is that the, the dynamic range of the Red Dragon is about 16 and a half stops. And what that means for real world applications is that uh, you can see farther into the blacks of your image and into the highlights of your image. Digital cameras have always kind of been plagued by the problem of blown out highlights because uh, it'd be above the dynamic range of the sensor. 16 and a half stops of dynamic, dy dynamic range is uh, phenomenal. And considering that you have that dynamic range, no matter where you have your ISO set, uh, is, is pretty revolutionary. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the Dragon settings. Just like the original Epic, you can, al you can always control the camera settings through the touch screen directly. Uh, makes it pretty easy to just get, get into the menus to see all your menu options or change some of your main parameters up here along the top, like your frame rate, ISO, shutter, uh, white balance, etc. Uh, you can also do it just as fast uh, by using the side handle, which I have installed here on the side. I can uh, use the, the scroll wheel on the side handle and the menu button here to go to get into the into the deeper menu layers. So first of all, let's uh, let's talk about format. Um, I'm going here into under menu um, and then settings, uh, uh, project, and then format. Uh, here's where here's the most important place to start when you're getting your stuff set up. Uh, you want to choose your resolution. Obviously, you want to shoot at the highest resolution that you can. 6K is a great place to start. Uh, the reasons you might want to use a lower resolution is if you're trying to match to like like an Epic or a, some other camera, um, or if you're trying to do some things like higher frame rates. Certain frame rates are only available when you uh, drop down to lower uh, recording resolutions. But just for the sake of argument, let's start at 6K. 
Um, aspect ratio of two to one is a pretty good starting place. It lets you gives you a lot of room, and then you can crop to like sixteen by nine or even a two three five from that if you want. Um, but I'm going to go ahead um, and put it at FF, which stands for full frame. Uh, full frame is going to basically let me uh, sample uh, every single pixel pixel on the sensor. It gives me the widest uh, possible field of view. Um, other options in here, I should just talk about these really quickly. The 2.4 to 1 uh, WS, which stands for widescreen, uh, that gives you a really nice um, widescreen sort of pseudo anamorphic look. I'm going to go and put that on here really quick. Uh, you can take a look and see what that does to the uh, to the to the uh, aspect ratio. Go on here, set format, and you'll see it switch over. And you can see that's my 2.4 to 1 aspect ratio. So that's a, that's a good setting for certain types of uh, cinematic applications. If you want like an, a, that extra dramatic feel or that, ep that epic scope, um, it can be a fun aspect ratio to play around with. Just bear in mind that you are losing uh, some of your vertical resolution off the top and bottom. But since you already have a 6K sensor already, you still have a very, very ultra high res image. So I'm going to go back to 6K uh, full frame. Anamorphic should be off. You can do anamorphic on this camera. It's a great camera for anamorphic because it has so many pixels to sample from. Um, but right now I'm going to keep that off. I'm going to keep looking around off. And, gonna, and it tells me right here, 6K, 6K full frame. My resolution will be 6144 by 3160. Go ahead and set that. That go ahead. That goes has it enters in. Uh, now I want to go ahead and figure out my my red code. Red code 8 to 1 is the default. Now, uh, with this uh, 512 gig high speed mag, it's letting me go all the way to 5 to 1, which is uh, that's a less compressed uh, uh, that's a less compressed red code. It's going to fill up my card faster, but it will technically give me a more uh, more information in my image. One of the great things about the new red code in the Dragon sensor cameras is that they uh, you can use higher compression rates and still get very very crisp super sharp images so you can so don't be afraid to dial this down you're not dial your compression down a little bit you're still going to get amazing uh, super high res images but uh but just because eight to one is the default i'll go ahead and leave it there for the time being um my frame rate is uh, 23.98 which is a good place to start i can also go ahead you can see I can crank it all the way up here. So right now it's letting me top out at 82.81 frames per second. That's at 6K full frame. So you can actually, um, in 6K uh, HD, I believe you can go up to 100 frames per second. And in 4K, if you down to if you down res or down window to a 4K frame rate, you can go up to 150 frames per second. And if that still isn't enough for you, you can even go down farther to 2K and crank it all the way up to 300 frames per second. It's important to remember that when you're doing frame rate adjustments and you're changing your resolution size, you're basically windowing in on your sensor. So you're not gonna have the same field of view. So my 6K full frame field of view uh, is gonna be is showing the full width of the 50 mil lens that I have on here. But if I go down to 2K, it's suddenly gonna be taking that sensor and it's gonna be punch, it's just gonna be sampling the 2K pixels in the, uh, the middle of the sensor. So my field of view is gonna be tighter. My 50 mil is suddenly gonna give me like a, a field of view similar to like an 85 or a 90 millimeter lens. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. If you're going to be doing a lot of really high speed frame rates, like at 300 frames per second or higher, you're going to probably want some really wide lenses. Uh, down here, this little button says advanced. It says project time base 23.98. Uh, it's important that you don't get your time base and your frame rate confused. Um, time base is the rate at which your, your content will play back. Uh, and your frame rate is the rate at which... Um, uh, is, is how many frames that are going to be played back over that 23.98 time base. So usually 23.98 is a great time base to start. If you're in Europe or any other PAL country, you probably want, might want to go to 25. Uh, you also have options of like a true 24. Uh, for some reasons, uh, like if you're doing a... Um, if you're doing a film print, it might make sense to have a, a true 24. Uh, there's also options for 2997 for broadcast work, as well as like 5994 and a couple other ones. Um, I can also change my ISO. As I mentioned earlier, base ISO for this camera is ISO 250, so I'll go ahead and put that there. Um, it looks a little bit dark to me. I, I wish my histogram had a little bit more, was a little bit more full, so I, I have no problem. Um, let's see where I stop on my lenses. My lens is pretty much wide open, so I'm going to go ahead and bump this up. I'll try 500. That looks a little bit better to me. That seems to be a good place to start, but you don't. But don't be afraid to really crank this up. Uh, Two thousand uh, still gives you a very, very clean image. I'll go ahead and stop this down so you can see. 
so stopping down the lens, you can still see, it's hard to tell on this little monitor, I know, and, and we're recording a monitor with another camera, so it doesn't give you a fair, fair representation of uh, the noise in the image, but ISO 2000 uh, is still very, very clean, um, even in your like very low IREs, like your 10 IRE and lower, uh, there's still minimal noise. One other thing I should mention is uh, HDRX. HDRX was a feature in the earlier epics, and that feature has made it over into the Dragon. Uh, it's honestly a little bit of an underutilized feature. Most people don't use it very often, but it is really cool, and it's something that you can find in no other camera right now. Um, HDRX is basically extending your dynamic range. HDR stands for high dynamic range. It's extending the dynamic range of the camera even more, even beyond the 16.5 stops it already has. So to access that, I'm going to go into the menu, hit HDR, turn it, go ahead and turn it on, HDRX on. You can see it activate there. And now I can choose the number of stops that I want to add. Let's see, let's me go between one and six stops. And basically what this is doing, the, the camera is going to be, it's going to double my data rate because the camera is going to be taking each image twice. One image um, at its native exposure and one Im image uh, either one, two, three, four, five, or six stops. Um, underexposed to re retain more highlight information and then and it's taking those images at the same time so that then later in my post-production workflow like in Red Cine, I can uh, enable my HDRX slider and adjust how much of that the extra frame I want to kind of bleed through into my image to adjust the opacity of it so I can really kind of see uh, extend the dynamic range so with this HDRX it's a really cool tool you can actually get um, you know uh, you can theoretically grab uh, dynamic range images of 20 plus stops. One other thing I should mention is the um, the look color under look. There's basically you can go into the look settings of this camera and you can create really crazy lookup tables that you can customize to your heart's content, um, or you can just use some of the standard ones that come pre-built into it. Uh, if I go in here and I click on color gamma, uh, it tells me what my color space is and my gamma space. And red has done a lot of work in this area, and they've come up with uh, their latest versions are called red, red color three and red gamma three. Um, you can also go back to Red Gamma 2 or even Red Log Film if you really want to uh, for your Gamma Space and under Color Space you can, it looks like there's only Red Color 2 still available. Um, but I definitely recommend using Red Color 2 or Red Gamma 3 unless you have a specific need to use something else. Sometimes I can understand people might want to use Red Log Film. If I go ahead and turn that on, I'll make sure you what that looks like. It gives me, uh, it's basically showing kind of like the raw image from the sensor. It's very, very um, low saturation, low contrast. It doesn't look very good on the monitor, um, but it kind of shows you all the detail and all the information that's there. Using the Red, co red Color 3 and Red Gamma 3 looks are a really good way to give you a nice looking, pleasing image on set, but that also gives you tons of, uh, of latitude for uh, post-production color correction. But bear in mind, all those settings, all those settings are just metadata. It's not um, hard baked into the image, so all those settings can be changed in your red setting anyway, so it's really not too much of an advantage unless you're trying to really show your director an extreme look on set. Thanks a lot for watching our video today. Again, we're really super excited about having the Red Dragon cameras in here. It's the best camera in the world right now that you can hold in the palm of your hand. A little bit of shameless self-plugging. Uh, the Red Dragons are available for immediate rental from brainboxcameras.com. Check out our website for details. Um, and if you have any requests, if you have any questions, if you want to tell us how awesome we are or how lame we are, feel free. Email us, call us. Any way you want to get a hold of us is fine. We're always happy to help uh, and answer any questions, no matter how complex or how simple. Uh, so thanks again for watching, and take care. We'll see you in the next video.